Hello and welcome to another episode of Embrace Your Outdoor Space. My name's Tommy Cross and in this episode we're going to be looking at parts of the garden that often get overlooked. If your lawn edge is driving you to the edge of despair, then fear not because this episode will help you tackle the perimeters and tame that wild grass and all you need is a battery and some nylon cord. Tommy, Tommy, when you say lines and batteries, don't you mean those? Oh yeah. On a serious note, to my mind, string trimmers are one of the most simple and satisfying tools to use, and an easy way to keep on top of awkward areas of your garden, or whether you want to pamper the perimeters of your lawn after mowing. When it comes to line trimmers, there is a lot of choice, whether it's lightweight, domestic applications, or semi-rural or commercial use, there are different tools to tackle different tasks. Now, first up is our lightweight ergonomic 24 volt line trimmer. And this is ideal if you've got smaller, medium sized areas of lawn that just need a tidy up and a tickle round around the outside. But when it comes to operation, the same principles need to be followed. It's all about making sure that you're in control of the tool and making sure that you're working safely. So always don your safety goggles, Always dress appropriately, good thick trousers, some solid or closed toe shoes are essential when using a line trimmer. One hand goes on the handle along the shaft, the other is at the top to activate the dual trigger mechanism. Now this particular model has a self-feeding line spool, so that means I'm not having to constantly go back and tug at the cable. There's a ball bearing system in there which will extend the line as it's used. And that line will deteriorate over time, it has a finite lifespan, but coiled up inside here, is over 10 meters of that line. It's plenty of length of line to keep you string trimming all season long. The other thing we have on the front here is what's called a tree or plant guard. If you extend your tree guard out, that will give you a protective edge to make sure that you don't push too far into that foliage and risk damaging your prized petunias. This is the guard. That is what's going to deflect and stop any stray particles that you might hit with that line deflecting up to you. Hence, we wear goggles. And how to use it? Well, let me show you how not to use it first. Let me show you how my wife was using it earlier on. If she ever watches this video, I expect to find my bags on the driveway when I get home. But it's all about being in control and not being too gun ho You'll also notice, as I fire up, did you hear that kind of clatter? That's a deliberate noise. That's not the motor making a noise. That's the line hitting the blade on the underside of your guard. That blade is designed to cut off any excess that's unfurled. So this is how you use it. Keep upright, look down the line, keep it elevated, and gently move towards the grass. By hovering just above the surface and gently lowering down, it means that we're going to grade the lawn down instead of firing down too quick too soon, and this is what you end up with. That is not the kind of finish we're looking for. We're looking for a flush finish. So once we've finished our mowing, the perimeters are the same level as our lawn. Now, another advantage of that handle is that I can position it. So if I undo the locking nuts here, on the underside and rotate it round, I can now go from doing the surface edges of my lawn to the inner edge. So I can get a good crisp finish on both sides. So having a lightweight line trimmer will help you look after your lawn. But what happens if you've got a bigger lawn or longer grass? Maybe you've got nettles or weeds at the bottom of the garden that are taunting you all summer long. So you're gonna need a little bit more power. Now you could go for cords, but then how are you gonna get that cable to run all the way to the bottom of that long garden. Or you can go for petrol, but then that's full of bluster and noise. Or we can double up the power with two 24 volt batteries and go for a 48 volt string stroke line trimmer. Same principles apply, only this time we're dealing with a much bigger motor and a brushless motor in this case. Where's my other battery you're gonna say? I haven't forgotten it. I kind of forgotten it, it's in the lawn. But where's my other battery? Well, I picked it up from the lawnmower. Seamlessly. 
Now, I mentioned this is a brushless motor, but what is a brushless motor? Well, here's the science bit. A brushless motor is a motor that doesn't have any brushes in it. But what that means, it means more efficiency from both the motor and the runtime of the batteries. So it's optimizing the performance of those batteries, which in turn gives us extra runtime, extra performance in the garden. Now we're dealing with two strings, two cords. This has what's called a bump feed. This will feed the line as you bump it to the ground. So during operation, if you need to expend line, you simply bump it on the floor and that bumping action activates a spring, which in turn pushes out the line to ensure that we've got optimum line length. We've also got a much larger blade on the underside of our guard. We want to make sure if we do hit those stray stones or bits of debris, that we are as protected as possible. But it's not an excuse to do that. It's essential that you always dress appropriately. So when it comes to activation, again, we've got a dual trigger switch, but this time around, we've got a safety mechanism built into this to avoid accidental operation. We depress the top, then we need to move our bottom lever and thumb trigger. We've got two speed setting here, a lower speed setting for lighter, shorter grass, and then we've got our second higher speed setting for more tougher tasks, long grass, nettles, weeds. This will be able to tackle those. We also remember dealing with two strings as well. So we've got twice the cutting potential, twice the battery power, and that brushless motor and those two speed settings. So let's move away from the small lawn and tackle some bigger stuff. Now, to show you how powerful this is, this is only setting one through some longer areas of law that we've grown here. Hover over the surface. It's not a case of trying to force that line down through the grass and hover over the surface to avoid scorching the lawn or grass surface that you're cutting down. You'll also notice I haven't got all that kind of bombastic noise of a petrol engine. I don't have the weight of the petrol engine. I don't have all that smoke and fumes pouring out into my face. It means I'm in a much safer working environment because I can hear what's going on around me. I can keep an eye out for things making their way to me. In my case, it's my kids throwing stuff at me. Now onto speed two. I need more power. Yeah. Longer grass again. I mentioned this is one of my favorite tools to use because there is something really satisfying, something satisfying about the noise, about the action, the fact that it's not labor intensive. I can go at my own pace, I can hold it comfortably and I can get almost immediate satisfying results. But we're just testing it on a bit of open paddock here which we've grown for a test case. Let's go and find something really tough to push this through. Up in the orchard here, I'm really gonna struggle because we haven't got any PowerPoints, the nearest one's back up in the house in the conservatory. How am I gonna to tend to this area using something which is powered by a cord and cable? The fact that I can walk over and I can tackle that. I've gone from tackling grass, so light grass on the front lawn, heavier, longer grass in the middle of the lawn. And now we've got an area of scrub at the back here. So we've got some thick kutch and rye grass in here. We've got some chickweed going on. Sticky weed. <laughs> Uh, this is purely for the sake of the video and I will let this grow back. But the first thing I'm going to do before I start cutting it down is to check that there's nothing in here that's gonna get too disturbed or upset. With the area checked and clear, get rid of it. It's one of those tasks I could happily spend all day doing. I haven't got a sweat on at all. It's not labor intensive work, but that's not where this tool stops because although we've tackled some light grass, some long grass, and some long weeds. What happens if you've got really, really, really long weeds and really, really long grass? <laughs> 